Hello, I'm Dr. William Schlosser, Washington State University School of the Environment. This is my classroom. The study of ecology considers population growth with birth rates and death rates, regulation and intraspecific and interspecific competition, mutualism, and predation. Focusing on adaptations, physiological ecology is concerned with the responses of individual organisms to temperature, moisture, light, and other environmental conditions. Closely associated with population and evolutionary ecology is community ecology, which deals with the physical and biological structure of communities and community development. To launch into inquiries, we investigate population genetics. Population ecology is evolutionary ecology that deals with the role of natural selection in physical and behavioral adaptations and speciation. Speciation is the evolutionary process by which populations evolve to become distinct species. Charles Darwin was the first to describe the role of natural selection in speciation in his 1859 book, The Origin of the Species. He also identified sexual selection as a likely but problematic mechanism. There are four geographic modes of speciation in nature, based on the extent to which speciating populations are isolated from one another. Allopatric, peripatric, parapatric, and sympatric. Focus on these terms, know how to define them, apply them to populations you observe, and be able to give examples of how you understand these instances. Speciation occurs when biological populations of the same species become isolated from each other to an extent that prevents or interferes with gene flow. The separated populations develop adaptive responses to their restrictive environments. Huh. We look for the examples to prove it. Sympatric speciation is the evolution of a new species from a surviving ancestral species while both continue to inhabit overlapping geographic regions. In evolutionary biology and biogeography, sympatric and sympatry are terms referring to organisms whose ranges overlap so that they occur together at least in some places. This is the case with deer species in North America. White-tailed deer, Odicolius virginianus, is the native deer species in this continent. Through time and geographic habitat differences, sympatric speciation has given rise to mule deer, Odysseus hemionis, to fill niche opportunities in higher elevation mountainous regions, steeper river basin habitats, and specialized feeding characteristics common to these lands. In some western regions of North America, the white-tailed deer Odicolius virginianus, range overlaps with those of the mule deer, Odicolius hemionis. Kamiak Butte supports populations of both species. They intermingle during the same periods of the year and on the same sites. Here, these species' representatives appeared on wildlife cameras on the south-facing aspect within a couple of weeks of each other. White-tailed incursions in the Columbia River Basin in southeast Washington and north-central Idaho have witnessed some hybridization evidence. I have witnessed white-tailed deer does about 15 miles southwest of the WSU campus near Almoda, Washington, with hybrid fawns. These offspring demonstrated difficulty running like a white-tailed deer, but could not hop like the mule deer genetic contributors either. In a rush, these fawns fell miserably. Evidence suggests that most male offspring are lost in vitro. Surviving males are sterile. Female offspring often live to maturity, but most of these are infertile. Further evidence suggests that fertile does can only breed with 100% pure males of either species, thus making offspring that are 75% one species and 25% the other. Evidence has not been generated to confirm if embryo males of those unions can survive to maturity or if they are reproductively fertile. In North America, the white-tailed deer species are widely distributed east of the Rocky Mountains, as well as in southwestern Arizona and most of Mexico, aside from lower California. 
It is mostly replaced by the black-tailed deer or mule deer from that point west, except in mixed deciduous riparian corridors, river valley bottomlands, and lower foothills in the northern Rocky Mountain region from South Dakota west to eastern Washington and eastern Oregon, and north to northeastern British Columbia and southern Yukon, including in the Montana Valley and the foothill grasslands. White-tailed deer are not found in western Washington, existing only in the eastern half. The westernmost population of the species, known as the Columbia white-tailed deer, once was widespread in the mixed forests along the Willamette and Cowlitz Rivers valleys of western Oregon and southwestern Washington. But today, its numbers have been considerably reduced, and it is classified as near threatened. The mule deer, Odicolius hemionus, is a deer indigenous to western North America. It is named for its ears, which are large like those of the mule. Two subspecies of mule deer are grouped into the black-tailed deer group. Unlike the related white-tailed deer, mule deer are only found on the western Great Plains, the Rocky Mountains, the southwest United States, and on the west coast of North America, where they are best known as black-tailed deer subspecies. The most noticeable differences between the white-tailed and the mule deer are ear size, tail color, and antler configuration. In many cases, deer species body size is a key difference. The mule deer's tail is black-tipped, whereas the white-tailed deer's is not. These are all about appearances, not genome variations of alleles and DNA sequences. Mule deer antlers are bifurcated and they fork as they grow, rather than branching from a single main beam, as is the case with white-tailed's. We saw in discussions about elk, the Cervus canadensis variety Nelsoni example, that elk were considered on the basis of a subspecies. In this topic of white-tailed deer, Odicolius virginianus, and mule deer, Odicolius hemionus, these species are in the same genus, but not the same species group. Deer of North America are more distantly related than elk. This has come as the description of sympatric speciation. It happened with the full resultant populations being geographically adjacent and sometimes overlapping. Resources are often limited in a habitat, and many species may compete to get a hold of them. Elk along this river compete for food, nutrients, water, and space. They also compete for all these resources with deer, beavers, and other herbivores in the same space. We explored the concept of an ecological niche and saw how species having similar niches leads to competition. We explored how species can evolve by natural selection to occupy different niches, thus divvying up resources and minimizing direct competition. <laughs>